Well, hello everyone. It is Micro. Um, so I've got a quick video for you guys. Uh, hopefully it'll be quick. Um, a lot of people have been asking how I've optimized my iMac to run Arma 2 using Parallels. Um, first off, I'm going to say immediately, Parallels is not the best solution. You will probably want to install Boot Camp because that way you're not running a second operating system on top of what you've got already and that in itself uses lots of resources but anyway if you're like me for now I'm probably gonna be installing bootcamp but anyway that's another that's another topic for another time uh, but if you want to install parallels to run Arma 2 um, specifically DayZ uh, I'm gonna show you um, what I do but first I'm gonna show you really quick my computer stats so I've got a uh, mid 2011 iMac 21.5 inch uh, 2.5 gigahertz processor i5 with 12 gigabytes of uh, RAM um, and let me show you uh, I've got 512 megabytes of VRAM of video memory um, and I'm running Lion not that it really matters but that's my setup for my Mac um, so let me show you immediately one of the things that I do. So when you guys install Parallels, open it up, um, but don't run the virtual machine quite yet. Click on the cog right here and you'll come up here to general. What you want to do, depending on how much memory your computer has, mine is 12, so I'm fine to max it out. If you can, max it out. If you're running a laptop, you know, put it on maybe Put it on what your RAM is. You know, you're probably only going to be running um, DayZ by itself. Maybe one other application. That's the most I would recommend. That's the most I'd recommend doing because then it's you know things get sluggish and laggy. Excuse me. And when DayZ and when uh, your computer lags, DayZ can lock up your computer and it's a whole pain in the ass. So immediately crank up your memory that's given dedicated to the virtual machine. Um, that will help things move quickly. Then you go to hardware um, and click on video. Um, since I've got 512, only 512 megabytes of VRAM, I'm going to put it my slider on 512. Um, I'm, it's okay to do this in my situation because I literally quit every single application on my computer when I play DayZ. I don't run anything. I don't run Skype on it. I run Skype on a different on my old laptop, my laptop, so that I can uh, record my voice there and not have to worry about lag because Skype sucks power for some reason. So, anyway, do those two things immediately. Um, then I think, let me let me boot up Windows real quick. I think there's something else that, I, that you can do. Let me check. All right, guys, well, here we are in Windows. Let me just get out of full screen. It might take a second because it's booting up. But um, I believe, go to the start menu, I am no Windows wizard by any means, so forgive me if I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Um, come on, computer's a little bit, the Windows machine's a little bit slow right now. Yeah, okay, go to your control panel. Alright, here we go, uh, we're in the control panel, it's loading, because it has to load on the PC for whatever reason. Ah, yes. Go to Appearance Personalization, change the theme. Now, when you, I'm assuming, let's say you use Windows 7, um, and when you first load it up, it's got the fancy new th new theme, transparencies everywhere, la -dee dash shadows, all fine and good, and it looks nice. However, that uses video RAM. So, to get just a little bit more out of your machine, you might want to choose... In fact, I would recommend you choose the simplest theme, uh, classic, I think it's called. I have no idea. Did it once, forgot about it because didn't need to worry about it ever again. But, um, yeah, I mean, you can see the theme that I have is very, it's like the old Windows. Um, oh, I'm scrolled down for some reason. Oh, here we go. So, uh, Windows 7 theme is what you get. And then go to Windows Classic. And that will give you a little bit more power, a little bit more VRAM dedicated so that you can play your games. I'm going to shut down because there's a couple other things that you can do um, on your main OS, your Mac, to speed things up a little bit. So, one sec. Um, la di da. Da di da. Ah! 
big thing that's happening right now. Um, if you have Time Machine like I do, um, and you want to play, open up your Time Machine preferences, and for the time being that you're playing, turn it off. Because the Virtual Machine will really lag when it's backing up. Uh, especially if it's backing up a lot of, lot of stuff. Um, my last back, my backups tend to be 20, 30 gigabytes at a time because I'm working with a lot of photos, obviously video screen recording files. So those will, you know, take up a lot of space and memory from the computer. So just turn it off when you're playing and turn it back on when you're done. So that's one tip. It's quit out of parallels. The other tip is to obviously quit all applications, but also to quit your finder. Let's see, cause see right here, I can do command Q in my finder, it's gone, it's quit. I've quit that application. I go to force quit, finder doesn't even come up here. It's all gone. Um, that frees up a little bit more memory on your main computer, which will then be transferred to your Windows uh, running parallels. Okay guys, I am back. Um, I did a quick Google search and uh, here it is. Um, this is not the method that I use to enable it. I did something different. I can't seem to find that, but this does the same exact thing. So what you want to do is um, open up Terminal. It's in your Macintosh HD Applications Utilities folder Terminal. Um, so you open that up. Uh, ba -ba. Cool. And then you... I'll put this link in the description so you can get to it yourself, you lazy bums. <laughs> um, and it'll add an option to quit the finder in your menu bar. So you, all you do is copy this line, copy it. You know, how do I quit the finder? How do I get the quit finder menu thing? Blah blah. Open up terminal, paste it in, press return. I'm not going to do it. Well, I can do it. Doesn't matter. Um, it'll come back up, and then what you want to do is write kill all uh, space capital F finder. Um, the kill all command will basically restart whatever application, in this case being the finder. Let me hide, let me open up my finder again. Oh, by the way, to open up your finder again after you've quit it, you can just click on your finder in your dock, bam, it's back. So let's say I had my finder this whole time, and I typed kill all finder, hit enter, it'll restart it and apply the changes that you did. And when I go to, when I click on my finder, I click finder. You can quit Finder this way or just do Command Q once you've clicked on your Finder. Um, so that's pretty much it, guys, for some tips on how to speed up your uh, Windows 7 operating system while running Parallels on your Mac. Um, I'm going to say this right away. If you have a laptop, mm, MacBook Pro, the best option. You know, the higher stats, obviously, the better. Um, I'm running on a uh, iMac desktop. Um, which gives me a little bit of an edge over some of you guys, maybe, you know, whatever. Um, but, yeah, do all the things I said, and I have seen 50% increase in the reliability and stability of Windows when I'm running uh, Arma 2, specifically Daisy. So, um, there you go. There's some tips. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And um, I've got some fun stuff in store for you guys, but that's for another video. Um, so thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you all later. Peace.